This is uh, Gary Kopachinsky from Inus Park Forest, and I'm honored uh, once again to speak with Congresswoman, Congresswoman Robin Kelly, um, who just over a week ago was involved in a, a lockdown um, when, at the United States Capitol building when uh, terrorist uh, supporters of President Trump stormed the building. Uh, Congresswoman, I'm so happy that you're well uh, and Me that too. your colleagues are well. Um, what was it like? Well, you know, it just started off like, you know, the average day, except for we were waiting to hear, you know, uh, the results from Georgia. We knew about uh, Reverend Warnock, but didn't know about Ossoff. And we knew that uh, that was a day which is usually more ceremonial, you know, for the uh, um, accreditation or credentialing of the um of the uh, presidential election. So I was in the gallery looking down, we were separated because of COVID. And uh, the next thing we were there, and the next thing, um, I'm getting some texts and emails, but still not alarmed in any way. And then I saw one of the Capitol Police moving kind of quickly. I saw um, Capitol Police rush in and take Leader Hoyer out. They had already taken, the vice president and the speaker out, but I couldn't see from where we were. And then the next thing I know, um, they said, you know, screaming up to us, the Capitol's been breached. You might have to hide under your seat. Um, there's been tear gas sprayed. You know, we have gas masks every three seats. And then it was get the gas masks, open them now. We never hid under the seats at that point. And we were on the more democratic side of the house on, in the gallery. And then the Capitol Police came and said, get up and get to the other side. So we were all running, going on over or under rails and up and down the steps, you know, in the gallery. And by the time we got to the Republican side, we heard a gunshot. Um, then I looked over the the half wall and I saw somebody, I didn't know who he was. He was in, a, you know, regular street clothes with a gun. And uh, so we all hid. And, um, and then they barricaded, you know, one of the main doors. But yeah, it was, it was frightening, but it's interesting that people kept their calm, but it, but it was frightening, you know, that you're thinking, hey, I'm just coming to work. And um, we have a few military folks that are veterans and they helped, you know, keep everybody calm also. And then a little while later or a while later, there were three knocks on the door and, we didn't know if we should answer or not, but the Capitol Police answered and it was another, you know, police officer and they told us to hurry up, get up and follow. So that's what we did. We ran down little halls and downstairs until we finally got to an undisclosed location. So. And you were there for several hours, correct? No, we were, it wasn't several hours. I think somebody said um, it might've felt like it, but um, that I think it was 45 minutes, a half hour to 45 minutes, something like that. We, where we were at for four to five hours was an undisclosed location where unfortunately too many of my Republican colleagues didn't have masks on. And now thus far, there's three or four members that have COVID. There's a spouse that has COVID. Uh, two spouses actually that have COVID now. Um, and, uh, you know, you've seen maybe the video on the news, my colleague, Lisa Blunt Rochester, trying to give out the mask. And, uh, you know, some people took it, a good amount of people, staff and some people, but there also was a number that didn't take it and made, you know, was um, uh, a little cynical about it. So, uh <laughs> As uh, we might have said before, every day seems like a week or a month. Uh, um, and uh, the, the president was just impeached for a second time yes. uh, Wednesday. And um, how, how, do you, how do you feel about that? And uh, is this different than a year ago? Uh, I feel... Uh his impeachment like before is well-deserved. 
Um, and this, in some ways, I, I hate to say even more so, but people's lives were at stake. That that's the thing that that it, you know he incited all of these people. He was not alone. I believe some of my colleagues were also involved in it, but his actions led to this, but also um, him being uh, the enablers around him, you know, helped us get to this also, that people would storm the Capitol. I mean, they broke up things, stole things, beat up police officers, killed a police officer, you know, and uh, we don't talk about it. We say five dead, but uh, right after a police officer killed himself, he committed suicide, you know, and um, I mean, it's, it's disgusting. It's horrible. And, you know, we sit in judgment of other countries. Well, people are sitting in judgment of us now. Um, you said that you believe that some of your colleagues were complicit. Yes, also, I do. How so? Well, we haven't had visitors uh, in, in the Capitol or, you know, in our office building, no lobbyists, no government relations. No, and the day before, uh, they took a group of people around, um, you know, the Capitol. And uh, Whip Clyburn, they found his office and even I can't find his office. I mean, the way the Capitol is situated and they found his office stole something from his office. It was just all very suspect. And then, you know, a number of them were at the rally, uh, stoking people, you know, also, you know, so, um, and then actually one of my Republican colleagues said to me that uh, there were some, he, he was embarrassed or disappointed uh, because he said that some of his, some of our colleagues on his side of the aisle were a part of inciting what happened. And what kind of consequences might they face? I'm not sure, but to me, they need to be, you know, they can be expelled as far as I'm concerned. Just censoring them is not enough. So what now? Um, we have a few days left. Uh, I understand um, <laughs> My father tells me that the president, uh, he, he heard on CNN that the president is once a military send-off uh, from DC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, he's into all the pomp and circumstance and, you know, he, he knows, I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I don't know what the Senate is going to do. We need 17 Republicans uh, to vote with us, but he knows he's not leaving uh, in a good light. The, even people that voted for him, uh, you know, some people think that, you know, he was a part of it, you know, he was to blame for it. And, you know, when I think about um, what happened with COVID, he already had blood on his hands. I'm sorry for how, I'm not blaming him for COVID, but the inaction, you know, speaks loudly. And now this, where again, uh, five people are dead, more people could have been uh, um, harmed or injured or killed, you know, in this. So, um, I mean, he still will be the president, so I guess he can demand that, but I hope in some way they can't do it. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, to what extent might you be concerned for your own safety? I think about it more now. I'm a pretty uh, free to be person. People get on my case, you know, about I don't have an entourage or, you know, anything like that. But that day, you know, has left a mark and you see how easy things can uh, turn. And also when I heard they arrested somebody in Chicago Heights, you know, and uh, all the stuff that he was about. So, you know, it's a reminder that uh, we have to be careful. And I know it's, it's early and history, history is gonna look back on this for a long time mm -hmm. and analyze and our uh, uh, national security is go, it, our agencies will be investigating for a long time. Uh, and I, uh, I heard uh, uh, a representative from the FBI uh, the other day said that the justice uh, Department of Justice has a long memory. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, 
people who think that they haven't been found yet, uh, that's, uh, that's still uh, on the horizon. Sure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not stopping the investigation, even though uh, Trump won't be president anymore. They're trying to find all of these people. And interestingly enough, I mean, friends and family members are turning in uh, some of the people that, you know, have been arrested already because people are appalled by their action. And I mean, they brought a noose, you know, and, you know, the Confederate flag just... Uh, you know, no end to um, their insurrection. And, you know, we don't consider them protesters. They're rioters or, you know, domestic terrorists uh, in my book. And I understand that uh, Speaker Pelosi has uh, ordered um, uh, metal detectors uh, for met uh, members of Congress. Uh, some uh, Republican uh, members have refused or yep. uh, yelled at Capitol Police uh, over this. Um, are there fines now? Um, yes, we're trying to put that in place with, uh, yes, with mask, not wearing your mask, and also um, uh, going around the uh, metal detectors because, and actually, it wasn't her idea to put the metal detectors up, it was other members of Congress, because we're concerned, you know, we have the new person from Colorado, we have the QAnon from Georgia and other people that want to bring their guns to the floor. And so many of us are against that. That is absolutely unnecessary. And you're not even really supposed to, you're not supposed to bring a gun to the floor. And if you bring a gun to the Capitol, it, it's supposed to be unloaded. But see, we don't go through the the metal detectors, but, um, and then in, um, you know, DC has their laws also that, you know, we're supposed to follow, but we don't want any guns on the floor. We don't even want them in the building. Uh, it's not necessary. There, there are Capitol Police there uh, that protect us. Is it uh, too soon to ask uh, what lessons uh, are we learning? Um, I know every day, it seems like there's another nightmare yeah. that we learned that uh, somebody experienced last week. Well, I mean, words matter. You know, what a leader says matters. Um, it is it, sad also how many people are following this person who lies so much, just lies so much and, and people truly believe you know, that the um, election is a fraud, which is, you know, very, very sad, you know, but it's only a fraud where he lost. It's not a, a you know, <laughs> a fraud otherwise. And it's, and it's, you know, it's, you know, when we think and look at, you know, Ted Cruz and those guys, they know it's a lie, yet they're still um, holding this lie up, you know, and it's so, like unbelievable. And, you know, like people say, all these Harvard and Yale graduates, you know, um, it, it's just really a shame. But also, I think that people, you know, take advantage of situations. They're using it to raise funds, just like uh, President Trump is, you know. So uh, there'll be more lessons learned. But, you know, words really matter. Also, um, there was uh, uh, racial undertones or overtones. And, and uh, uh, anti-Semitic uh, uh, undertones or overtones, or however you look at it, and uh, uh, so that's you know that's still um, prejudice and hate and fear still grip our country. Uh, finally, Congresswoman, um, President-elect Biden spoke last night, and uh, uh, there's a whole different feel. Uh, sure. to, uh, when, when this man speaks, and he uh, spoke of uh, imagination, uh, he used the, uh, the word several times, um, and uh, his hopes uh, for the future, um, what are you looking forward to as uh, the Biden presidency unfolds? Sanity, for one thing, <laughs> integrity, uh, for another thing, compassion, 
uh, but also really working toward crushing this virus, getting our economy, uh, you know, back to where it needs to be, um, building relations back uh, globally, um, an infrastructure bill, uh, working uh, on our environment, so many things. There's so many things to name that we've fallen so far behind. And and uh, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect uh, Harris, they are going to have to build back. And I know he says build back better because the departments have been decimated, you know, because of him. They they need so many more workers. They need to build the departments back up, you know, uh, EPA and HUD, the State Department. There's a lot of work uh, for them to do. But, you know, I'm looking forward to... Um, you know, we'll probably never be back to what we used to say was normal because of COVID, but to get, you know, get this, the vaccines out, hoping people will take the vaccines and so we can get back to normal and getting our economy up. I know those are two things that, you know, he really wants to uh, tackle first. And uh, one, of the, one of the lines that uh, moved me last night when he spoke was uh, he spoke of our moral obligation to each other. And uh, I think uh, at the very least that touches on let's wear masks, uh, let's right. socially distant, uh, distance ourselves. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts? You're, you I mean, you know, we're all in this together. And even though um, I heard someone make the comment, we're all in this storm together, but uh, we're in, we're in different boats. Some of us may be on a cruise ship, a yacht, you know, a canoe or a raft. And we need to look out for those in the raft or the rowboat. You know, we need to help each other along and look out for each other. We need to have compassion because there are people right now in rough situations that probably never thought you know, that they will lose their job or their home. I have to drive up and get a box of food. Um, you can tell that because you see people that are in nice cars that, you know, are in a tough uh, situation now. So we do need to look out for each other, help each other, be empathetic with each other. Congresswoman, thank you so much. You're quite uh, welcome. I've uh, known, I, I was thinking this afternoon, I can think back years that uh, uh, we've, we've known each other and I'm uh, honored that you took the time. Of course, of course. I'm honored that you asked. Uh, have a good day and a great weekend. You too. Take okay, care. Okay, take care.